this video is a continuation of the previous video on osteomyelitis. In this video, we will look at types, the clinical and radiographic features, the histopathologic features, and lastly, we will look at the treatment of osteomyelitis. So let's begin. Osteomyelitis can be categorized into acute and chronic types based on its origin and duration. Acute osteomyelitis arises rapidly, usually due to bacterial infection, whereas chronic osteomyelitis lasts for an extended time and often due to untreated acute infections. In both forms, the mandible is more frequently involved than the maxilla. Looking at the clinical features, acute separative osteomyelitis occurs when a high virulence and bacterial load spreads quickly, leaving insufficient time for the immune system to resolve the infection. Individuals with acute osteomyelitis typically exhibit signs and symptoms of an inflammatory process that has lasted less than one month. Symptoms may include fever, pain, increased white blood cell count, swollen lymph nodes, considerable tenderness, and soft tissue swelling in the affected area. Paresthesia in the lower lip and drainage may also be noted if the pus has accumulated tremendously, leading to compression of the inferior alveolar nerve. Moreover, the necrotic bone may detach from the surrounding healthy bone, a condition referred to as bony sequestrum, which is the dead and exfoliated segment of the bone. On the other hand, chronic separative osteomyelitis occurs when acute osteomyelitis goes untreated, evolving into a condition that can be a silent killer due to its chronic nature. However, it may develop independently in some cases without a preceding acute phase. In chronic osteomyelitis, patients often do not experience pain symptoms, leading to later diagnosis after a significant bone loss has occurred. While the condition progresses into a persistent, low-level manner, individuals might suffer from acute flare-ups or intervals of reduced pain. In chronic separative osteomyelitis, the body's defense mechanisms in response to the long-standing chronic infection create granulation tissue within the bone, which then develops into scar tissue as it tries to isolate the infected area from the surrounding bone, effectively serving as a breeding ground for bacteria. Due to the unique blood supply of the jaw bones, which rely on a few main arterial loops, damage to the primary vessel can lead to the death of large sections of bone as well, which may cause sequestration of an entire quadrant of the jaw. Coming to the radiographic features, on a panoramic radiograph, the acute separative osteomyelitis shows off an ill-defined radiolucency of bony destruction occasionally combined with whitening of the pedial space, loss of the lamina dura, or loss of circumscription of the inferior alveolar canal or mental foramen. Periosteal new bone formation may also be seen in response to the subperiosteal spread of the infection. Radiographs in chronic separative osteomyelitis reveal patchy, ragged, and ill-defined radiolucent or dark zones that may contain central opaque sequestra and be intermixed with zones of radiodensity. Less frequently, the infection may be predominantly osteosclerotic or occasionally almost osteolytic. The osseous change is continuous and may exhibit spread to the periosteum by direct extension. This is different from primary chronic osteomyelitis, where there are multiple separate radiolucent areas of bone loss within zones of radioopacity. Biopsy in acute osteomyelitis is rare due to the infection's liquid nature and lack of soft tissue involvement. When performed on a bony sequestrum, the sample consists mainly of necrotic bone with loss of osteocytes, peripheral resorption, and bacterial colonization. The bone's periphery and haversion canals contain necrotic debris and an acute inflammatory infiltrate of polymorphonuclear leukocytes. The sample is often diagnosed as sequestrum unless clinical and pathologic evidence suggests acute osteomyelitis. Biopsy in chronic osteomyelitis typically reveals a significant soft tissue component consisting of chronically inflamed fibrous tissue filling the spaces between bone trabeculae. 
Scattered sequestra in areas of abscess formation are also commonly observed. The acute separative osteomyelitis can be treated surgically or with antibiotic therapy. The surgical treatment aims at eliminating the infection source, establishing drainage, removing infected bone, and obtaining bacteriologic samples. Empirical antibiotics, typically penicillin, combined with metronidazole or clindamycin are given until culture results are available. Chronic separative osteomyelitis can be treated surgically and with advanced techniques. Removal of all infected tissue down to healthy bone is mandatory in surgical technique, combined with high-dose intravenous antibiotics. If the infection persists, additional treatments such as hyperbaric oxygen therapy or bone grafting may be required. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.